Hey, Peter from Professional Boat Care. Just riding out to uh, my client's boat, the Fleming uh, 55. We're about to do a great trip up, up the reef on it. Yeah, so here she is, getting the stabilizers fitted at the last minute. Here's a bit of an overview of where we're going. If you follow my cursor, so this is the Queensland coast of Australia for my international viewers. So we're coming from Brisbane and we come up the outside of Fraser Island there. Just follow my cursor. Then we, uh, this whole sort of dark blue area is the Swains Reef. Um, it's about 100 nautical miles long of reef and about half that is wide. And then there's the Sundays, which is where we're ending up. So we're gonna go up the inside of the Swains and then up into this area here where the cursor is sort of that northeastern quadrant and fish some of those areas. But before that, we need to go down to the fuel dock and fill her up. If you've looked at some of my videos on my channel, that's the uh, Nordhaven 68 called Sinjero. We've done some great adventures there. There's some good videos to look at. My business professional boat care looks after that boat and that was Nick, my worker, giving it some love. And we're into the fuel dock here at Royal Queensland Yacht Squadron. Then we went back to her berth and waited for Scotty's mates to uh, arrive and then straight into a safety briefing with them. The area light will hold down the button to send the GPS off. The D-Fib, that's the D-Fib. First aid and grab bag. You pull that and release it, then you've got to drag it. There's our schedule of watches. It's a, uh, about a 40 hour run, non-stop. So we were doing sort of four hour watches two on at a time overlapping. So Scotty's uh, previous boat was the Sormarez, which is featured here in the latest edition of Classic Moreton Bay Cruises. He did a full refit on her at the Norman R. Wright Yard. They did a great job. This is a great coffee table book. This is the second edition. A friend of mine, Andrew Harper, put them together. And they're a must have really for any serious boat lover. That's the first edition. And uh, you can order them at uh, the website here, classicmortonbaycruises.com. just take advantage of the uh, calmer waters of Moreton Bay before we got outside. Bit of tackle preparation. Forecast was uh, not so good for the first part of the week. We had sort of 20 knots of southeast, but at least it was on our stern quarter all the way. Uh, and it meant we actually got a really good weather window at the other end, so we thought we'd run a few lures as we came out past Combiora and over the trench area. Uh, the Sunshine Coast. Beautiful dawn, you can see we had our 20 knots there, but it was a lovely uneventful evening, which is always a good thing in a night passage. They have a very good reputation, the uh, Fleming, and you can see why, they're just so beautifully put together and the systems are fantastic, lots of redundancies, and but not enough rod holders. <laughs> Apart from that, they are a beautiful boat. Good morning, we're just approaching uh, Indian Head off Fraser Island. It's been a pretty good night. We've got about um, 15, maybe a little more out of the southeast. Sea state's a little bit confused. But, uh, there's a bit of activity here bird wise, so I'm just going to run a uh, hard body. I've already put out, as you saw, that uh, skirt over there. Yeah. 
What do we got? That's good, right? Good, well, that was a good way to start it, eh? Yeah. Still there? Drop them. Oh, that's nice too. Yeah, I like that. Right again. Spotty's still up. I think he's gone, that's it. Okay, it's all you, mate. This action roused Scotty from his bunk and uh, he got to catch one. You want to let him go after a photo? Yeah, we already had two on board, so it was enough fresh sashimi. The start of a trip. So off in the distance there is Sandy Cape, the very uh, northern tip of Fraser, and that's Indian Head just there, that headland. Anyway, whip the fillets off these long tail. They're fantastic uh, sashimi, and uh, beautiful cook too. Cook them like a medium rare steak. Yeah, this stretch of water that runs up along the outside of, outside of Brakesy Spits, just fantastic. It's so productive. You can see the contours of the continental shelf just offshore there. Caught heaps of big blue marlin, striped marlin, giant wahoo, dolphin fish. It all happens along here. Put them out again, eh, Ben? Yeah. But we're really undergunned with 50 pound outfits, doing 10 knots in a cruiser, not a game boat. So I wanted skirts out now. Big chance we were going to find some marlin. An even bigger chance we were going to lose them. <laughs> but it's always exciting getting one on, I reckon. It's all about the bite. <laughs> you got a marlin on it. Just like oh, clockwork, we hook up to a billfish. But we're in a Beautiful Fleming 55 that's doing 10 knots. There's no opportunity to uh, to go charging back on it. Right, let's slide it up. Maybe we can. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. Line break. Look at you, dude. It's a champ. Ah, oh, the backing. A champ in the backing. Yeah, I thought it might have been a water pressure break, but it was uh, a bit of a knot in the uh, braid. Anyway, we quickly uh, put a new top shot on that reel and got the lures out again. again. <laughs> Before we knew it, Ben was having another shot at one. Pulled the hooks on that one. Very hard to try and catch a marlin in this situation, so nothing Ben could have done differently. But those dolphin were amazing, we saw coming across our bow. So by now we were sort of right out in the wide open, beelining it to the swains. I think it was about 3,000 metres deep. Time for some beautiful long tail sashimi, afternoon drinks. And then we heard a real scream again in the cockpit. 
know, but I think was, there's a fish behind it, I think. Get ready. So you hit it again? Wind it, wind it. Go ahead. You on again? Yeah, he's a, must be a billfish. He just came back Ooh. and ate it. There he is. Woo! Oh, holy shit. Oh, wind on him. Wind up. Keep it tight. Keep it tight. Wind. Woo! Look at him go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Pretty work, mate. That was fun. <laughs> oh, insane are those blue marlin. Anyway, while we're all yelling wind, 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 he couldn't because the line was wrapped around the tip of the rod. Anyway, again, would have been a hard fish to catch in this situation, but great fun to see it. Was it just working as a proximate thing, or were they there the whole time? So we woke. To similar weather, we still had sort of 20 knots. But that was all expected. And we're looking forward to sort of getting a bit of shelter behind the swains once we get into that reef structure. These dolphins are putting on such a great show. Meanwhile, the boys were cooking up nice bacon and egg wraps. And as we approached the swains, I thought we'd get some hard body lures out and get ready for some action closer to the reef. Wire leaders getting ready for the toothy critters. Uh, little flying fish. Not uncommon to find a few flying fish on your deck after a night passage like that out wide. And we pulled out the zoning map. We didn't want to drag lures through any green zones. Still got gusts of 25 there. But the seas were a little bit better behind the reef. And as we came up into some shallower water, we hooked up. Pump and wind, that's it. Pull up and then wind down. Well, we just upgraded the sashimi with this beautiful yellow fin tuna. <laughs> and finally, some calmer water as we made our way into the first reef for the evening. Is that about 44 and, a half. 44 and a half hours? 44 hours from Brisbane, non stop. Yeah, so nearly uh, 400 nautical miles that passage. Felt good to be there. And the joy of having a water maker means I can hose all the salty boat, get it all looking good for the boys. But before we went off in the tender for a fish, we wanted to put the new stabilizers out. So we made these rigging brackets here that clip on. And that's the actual flopper disc that goes in the water. And basically, as the boat rocks, one of those sinks, and on the other side, it's trying to lift it, and that slows the roll down. That's some clever engineering there. We use the existing uh, fair lead to mount the pole brackets, like a spinnaker pole bracket. 
That way we can store everything away and not have it sort of looking awful. And I'll tell you what, sitting out there on a high tide with all the waves coming over the reef, these things are an absolute game changer. They're a lovely looking boat, the Fleming. They really got the lines right. Anyway, after all that time at sea, the boys were pretty keen to stretch their legs, so we uh, threw the kayaks in and everyone went off for a bit of a paddle and a swim. So that had us all feeling a bit more refreshed. And then Neil, who's a very keen angler, asked if we could go and have a bit of a flick on top of all these uh, bommies. It's an exciting way to fish, yeah, very retreat, visual. But I find uh, high tides more productive generally, and we were on low tide here. As you can see, waves breaking across the bommies. Yeah, so no action to report in the fishing for that afternoon. So we put all the toys away and uh, I got into cleaning that beautiful yellowfin tuna. Then by tomorrow night it's yes, classic, yeah. Five not five to seven knots. Unreal. Right through to the end right of the week. Right through the end of the week. Oh, yeah. Now what is that? Yeah, it's a bit of a new thing. It is. It's a new thing. Well, Scotty didn't have enough for Oh wasabi. We got a wasabi. So what do I do? Bottled in there in case it's good. I'll tell you what, it was great having Neil on board. He is sensational in that galley. Two, three. <laughs> Beautiful dawn out on the reef. Still a little bit of breeze around, but Neil and I went off in the tender to have a fish. Got him on, did you see the strike? Might have got me in the reef. Oh, bugger. Right, man. Now, fishing with uh, Smythe, we're casting stick baits over the top of the reef. See if we can find something. Oh, which we just did on camera. <laughs> well done, mate. So something you get used to out on the reef is the birds nesting at night on your bow rail Thank and you. leaving their mark. <laughs> anyway, as they cooked brekkie, Scotty and I sat down and worked out a bit of a plan of attack for the day. So it was a nice simple plan, basically just fish good looking country on our way north to the next reef we wanted to anchor at for the evening. Oh, it's coming the right colour. Oh, oh, bloody China. <laughs> yeah, they look great, but they're uh, potentially full of cigateria poisoning, so 
We don't eat the Chinaman fish. Uh -huh. Get him in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're looking for. Well done, right? Yeah, so once the fishing sort of quietened down, we uh, headed on towards our next destination. This reef's quite a good anchorage. It's a, sort of a uh, lagoon, really. It's got a bit of an entrance you come in through. Very calm at low tide, as you can see. Different story in the evening, though. High tide, you get the slop coming over the reef, so good to have those stabilizers. Anyway, the boys were keen to head off and have a bit of a fish in the tender. A great opportunity for me to give the boat a proper wash down. to release. Told the boys they got to film any fish they catch. Well, that's a feed. That's a feed. Well done, boys. Beautiful. Some people start here and go that way. I always fill it this way. If you watch a lot of my videos, you'll know I'm very partial to some nice sunset photos of the boat I'm on. <laughs> Can't help myself. This is such a pretty photogenic it's boat. Smythe weaving his magic in the galley yeah. again. <laughs> On film. Perfect. Oh, hang on. I'll get it. Just if he goes to go around a bombing, uh, oh, he'd like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the weather was really backing off as per forecast. Looks a bit too deep along the front here, though. Had a thought we'd try and get ashore on this sand cave, but we needed high tide. So we gave up on that idea and just had a bit of a reef fish. And then we thought, it's such a beautiful day, let's go back to that lagoon and enjoy a bit of a swim. And you can see the bommies here coming into the entrance. A little bit sketchy, good to have good visibility. And that one, well, didn't go so well touching that one. When you get this sort of weather out on the reef, you just got to make the most of it. It's so special. We're uh, 300 kilometres east of Mackay, just about. Wind's finally dropped out and we've just found a nice little spot. Oh, it's all beautiful staghorn coral along the edge here. Anyway, I'm going to have a swim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
It's hard getting them together for a group photo, but it's worth it. They're all happy after. Look at that moon though, we just couldn't believe it. So today was the day we were going to do an overnight passage right through to the Whit Sundays. But first we had to gingerly get our way out of this lagoon, avoiding all the bombies. And then we were going to have a bit of a fish again along the way and then uh, settle in for the overnight passage right through. Arriving at the Whit Sundays about 8am the next day. The weather was really turning it on now. Uh, that wasn't on the chart, that little shallow spot, and it came up to I think it was uh, three and a half metres under us, and we've got a three metre tide, so we would have hit that at low tide, I'd say. And it's not on the chart, I'll show you. Wow. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a real wake up call for anyone cruising around the Swains. It's not as well charted as you'd like to think, very much a visual thing. And I did notice the water changing and I backed her off before we came right up to the pinnacle, but just got to be careful. Bit of fun for Scotty. Good sport fish, but not oh, so no. good as a go. table fish, so we released it. Wow, look there, the sailfish. So, this is something you don't see every day. A few sailfish feeding on a bait ball right next to us while we were reef fishing. It only looks like a couple of fish there, but there could be half a dozen there, and they sort of take turns to come up through the bait ball. I used to see this happening off Cape Morton years ago, back in the uh, 70s and 80s. Oh, we're going to have a tea. Let's Two red throats, good. Bring them in, swing them in over the boat. <laughs> Scotty on? Yeah. I believe I'm getting this on film. Fish. Well done, mate. Oh, <laughs> octopus eating an octopus lure. I don't like these things. <laughs> He's a good one. Okay, so this gives you a bit of an overview again. So we'll zoom into roughly where we are on the Swains Reef there. We're gonna 
come out through up the inside here and steam through the night into the Whitsunday Islands here. Lovely white beach is the famous Whitehaven beach. Then we come around the next day, we go into Chance Bay there if the wind gets up and then we're going to uh, go into Hamilton Island Marina there. But have a look at this weather. This is what you dream about for a night passage. Black Marlin. Oh, I think we had rubber hooks on for that one. Anyway, everyone was just marvelling at the uh, all that our cameras out, snapping away at this beautiful scenery. Glass off, beautiful setting sun on a beautiful boat, <laughs> and behind us was the moon rising and the first boat we've seen back there. In the whole week. Yeah, if only all our night passages could be like this. It's such a pleasure. Anyway, this was kind of interesting. When I woke at three for my watch, the boys uh, explained there was a ship closing in on us. It was a bit of an awkward situation there, you can see. I, I needed to get across him. Green but... K Max, Green K Max. This is Sunday, Sunday on 160 Hobby. Yeah, so I raised him on Channel 16 and um, suggested uh, we go around his stern, and that's what we did, so. As the dawn light filled the sky, you could just make out in the moonlight ahead of us there, the Whitsunday Islands starting to show up. What a magnificent evening. Sundays are so photogenic, such a pretty cruising ground. And even if you got 20 to 25 knots, there's always somewhere to hide. This is Solway Pass, a narrow gap between two islands, and you can see the current really roars through there and tosses the boat around. And there's Whitehaven Beach coming into view now. One of the most popular spots in the Whitsundays. So it's always pretty busy. Thank you. Scotty, Scotty uh, kindly dropped me ashore. It's pretty keen to go for a bit of a hike. Stretch the legs. Most of the islands have really good walks on them. Tourists are starting to turn up at Whitehaven. That's uh, us over there. The boys were in having a swim. Told them I'd meet them on the beach after my walk. Some pretty boats getting around. And of course, while they're ashore, I love to do a bit of a clean. Wow. Neil, working his magic in the galley again with some fish wraps. With the sea breeze building, we thought it'd be nice to go around the other side of the island for the evening. This is a place called Chance Bay. Very pretty.
You love that ultra anchor. Went ashore and had afternoon drinks and nibbles on the beach, soaking up the scenery and feeling a bit of land under our feet for the first time in a week, really. So the plan was to head into uh, Hamilton Island after breakfast. But first I had to get some shots of that boat with that backdrop. As we came around the corner, there's uh, Hamilton Island. It's kind of the centre of the Whit Sundays, really. It's got the airport and shops and great accommodation, resorts. That's the yacht club at the entrance to the marina. And I suppose one of the things that makes it so attractive is that you can fly straight to the island and literally walk to your boat if you want. Anyway, we had a lovely evening in a restaurant there and then in the morning, something I like to always do if I've got time is walk up to Passage Peak there. It's a pretty uh, demanding walk, I've got to say. It's a two hour sort of hike. A great thing to do. Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. Um, Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, there's a few more good videos coming this year. Uh, hit the notification bell so you don't miss those videos when I upload them. And look, I've, uh, when we came into the island, I got the sad news about the passing of Jimmy Buffett. So I just wanted to dedicate this uh, video to Jimmy. We'll, uh, you were the soundtrack to our boating life and uh, we'll certainly keep the party going. Thanks for watching everyone, cheers.